yesterday, President Muhammad Buhari set up an economic advisory council, which he said will replace the current economic management team, EMT, and will be reporting directly to the president. The Economic Advisory Council will be chaired by Professor Doi Salami, a renowned economist. Others on the team include Dr. Mohamed Sabagi, who will be the vice chairman. The president has said that the Economic Advisory Council, the EAC, will advise the president on economic policy matters, including fiscal analysis, economic growth, and a range of internal and global economic issues, working with the relevant cabinet members and heads of monetary and fiscal agencies. Well, now, let's uh, get some insight on the implication of what the president did. And don't forget that earlier today, the president had also dissolved uh, the panel for public recovery uh, of uh, properties headed by uh, Mr. Obono Obla. Well, let's speak with a former deputy governor of the Central Bank, a former presidential candidate, a lawyer and a political economist, uh, Professor Kingsley Mahalu, who joins us from our Abuja studio. Thank you so much, Professor Mahalu, for coming uh, tonight on the program. Let's get your view. Uh, there was the economic management team. When you were at the CBN in the, uh, the time of uh, former President Olusha Gwabasanjo, we do know the roles of vice president and the role of the president in the issues of economy. But now that the president has uh, scrapped the EMT and uh, he has set up the EAC, how does this come to you as an economist? Does this make economic sense administratively? What also does this mean for Nigeria? Well, thank you, Cheryl. Um, I, I have commended uh, President Muhammad Buhari um, for setting up the new Economic Advisory Council and abolishing the economic management team. Uh, the reason why I commend the president is because I think it's a good move. The Nigerian economy is in a crisis, and it's in a crisis of humanitarian proportions. My heart is broken into pieces at least 15 times every day when I get calls from Nigerians who are suffering in poverty, who have no money to pay for their hospital bills, who have no money to pay for their children's school fees, who don't have a job. Uh, and so this is really a heart-rending situation we have here, and therefore, it, it, the way to address it is to bring competent economic thinking and analysis uh, to the problem. I also think it's a good idea because it is what I proposed uh, in my book, um, Build, Innovate, and Grow. Um, I had proposed that the president should create an economic advisory council, which will be independent and advise the president directly. And I'm very pleased to know that exactly what I recommended in the book, which was my vision when I ran for office of the president um, in the elections in 2019, is what the president and this government have now done. Now, the question is, going forward, where do we go from here? Um, the reason why it is a better move, what he has done, is because the EMT concept, the economic management team concept, had some problems. Um, it was not backed up by uh, robust intellectual economic competence uh, that it should have. And that was a, a big problem. It started, the concept started with, uh, I'm talking about in the Muhammad Buhari administration. The concept started in the Obasanjo government when it was really an economic team in, in the correct sense of the word. And Ngozi Okonjiwala was heading it. In the government of President Goodluck Jonathan, the president himself headed the economic team. And the governor of the central bank, uh, Sanusi Lamido Sanusi, and myself were members of, of the economic management team representing the central bank. But I noticed, um, and I did convey my concerns to uh, Ngozi Okonjiwala, uh, that there were some problems with the whole concept. It, it seemed that there was no philosophical foundation, which is what I've been saying, that the Nigerian economy lacks an, a philosophical foundation. And so you cannot plan for the long term. You cannot have policy that is consistent over time if you don't have a philosophical foundation. Also, in Jonathan's era, the economic management team had a very heavy presence of private sector captains. Now, that's good in itself but it also had some problems because a lot of times those uh, kinds of personalities, they want the economy to function, but they're also looking out for their own business interests at the end of the day. Um, and then another problem 
was that, you know, it became what we call in law an article of snob appeal. Everybody wanted to be a member of the economic management team so that they could get face time with the president. Um, MDA heads, ministries, uh, departments and agencies lobbied to make presentations with PowerPoints to the president, all of which amounted to nothing really. Uh, because I think an economic team should be thinking, monitoring the economy on a daily basis and trying to find solutions to foundational economic problems, not just what the president can do for your own particular agency or your own particular ministry. So I think what the president has done now is to go back to what could be a better approach to managing the economy. But well, Professor Mohalo, for a lot of you who have advocated for uh, equal partnership between the public sector, the federal government, in doing business and the private sector, uh, we had a broader EMT that has uh, uh, a lot of the private sector players in that team, the governors, uh, some other heads of other agencies that are, are spearheading out other aspects of the economy uh, together. So the question is that where does this leave all of these people? Also, in the face of the fact that the EMT being headed by the vice president administratively, are you saying that the EMT has failed in the first four years of President Buhari? There is no question in my mind that the EMT failed because the economy went into recession and uh, we were just struggling to come out of it. So there's no question that the economic management of Nigeria under this government has so far been a failure. Um, and I'm on record as saying that and that's a very important reason why I ran for president because I felt I had a, a better, more robust economic vision. Uh, part of that vision is this idea which they have now taken. And that's good, right? because the question, why, the reason why we do what we do is, you know, how can the country make progress? That's why we're doing it, you know. So um, I don't think the others are left out, because even in the uh, concept, the framework that I have seen, there's room for the Economic Advisory Council. First, they should report directly to the president. That's what it should be, because the president ultimately is the person who is responsible for whether Nigeria's economy works or fails for whether people have jobs or they don't have jobs. 54% of youth in Nigeria today are unemployed. That's a crisis. And we elect a government to be able to make life better for our masses. So if that is not happening, it's the president who should be held responsible. So he has taken the ultimate responsibility for the final decisions on the economy, and I see nothing wrong with that. I think that's actually the right thing to do. So this council should advise the president, or will advise the president, but we hope that the president will listen to their advice, because the team as composed in this council is a competent team. There's no question about it. But we want to see that he will listen to their advice, and as I recommended in my book, and which is exactly what was done, that this council will be independent and standalone. The ministers will not be part of the economic management team because they have the responsibility to actually manage the economy. So when the council advises the president, if the president agrees with their advice, he should then direct the ministers to execute these economic um, agendas. That's what I think. I think there's room uh, also for the involvement of others, such as the vice president, such as the private sector. There needs to be a better consultative forum um, between the government and the private sector. In my book, I recommended the creation of a State Business Relations Council, SBRC, it's also in this same chapter where I recommended the All creation right. of an economic advisory council. The president is making some very drastic decisions about the economy. So he set up the economic advisory council headed by Professor uh, Doyi Salami. And uh, that uh, has uh, a lot of people in that committee, which will advise the president directly, they're supposed to report to the president. As against the economic management team headed by the vice president, which the president scrapped. Another thing that the president has clapped today is uh, uh, the panel headed by Obono Obla, which was uh, set up to by the vice president when he was acting president, when the president was not around in the country. It was set up to recover public assets. The president today scrapped that panel. So he has asked the attorney general of the federation, Mr. Malami, to take over the investigations from that panel. Let's get to, uh, back to our conversation with Professor Kingsley Mahalo. Uh, political economist and a former central bank deputy governor. 
Uh, thank you so much, Professor Mualu. Quickly, let me get your reaction. Under the office of the Vice President is how the, the social investment uh, program, the welfare risk agenda of uh, uh, the Buhari government, at least in the first four, uh, four years of this government. And under that program, the ERGP, is what they said that they want to get 100 million Nigerians out of poverty in 10 years. Part of that 10 years is four years of the second term. So how, where does this leave the vice president's agenda and the plan in all of this referee's agenda? Well, um, thank you, um, Sharon. I think I should say, first of all, I think I should say, first of all, that the, the management and the Nigerian economy's performance is the responsibility of the elected president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Now, if in his own wisdom, he decides to delegate some functions to the vice president, for example, as happened in the first term, that most of these uh, functions were performed out of the office of the vice president, that's an internal arrangement. It's a delegated power which can be withdrawn or modified. So I don't think there's an issue there, really. Um, the vice president has a constitutional role, which is his chairmanship of the National Economic Council, which is made up of the governors of 36 states of the federation, chaired by the vice president with the minister of finance and the governor of the central bank as members. So that's a constitutional role. So what I expect is this. I expect that advice will come from the Economic Advisory Council. In they will consult with ministers if they want to, and then they will advise the president directly. The president will make a decision. He will pass these decisions on to the ministers to implement. He will also guide the vice president based on his own decisions. These decisions will be brought also to the National Economic Council, chaired by the vice president, so that state governors can discuss them and adopt them at state levels as a national approach to economic problems. You talked about uh, hundred, taking 100 million people out of poverty. That's a very grand ambition, but to be able to achieve it, a lot more has to be done that we have not yet seen being done, which I come back to. Uh, one of the first tasks is a foundational economic philosophy for the Nigerian state, based on which economic policy can be made into the long term, regardless of which government is in power. So there are, there's something people need to understand, and I hope that this Economic Advisory Council will address that problem. I don't expect them just to be talking about GDP growth. GDP growth is important, but it's not enough. What about GDP per capita? What about the average income of the average Nigerian? This has been going down over the last four years since 1915. Nigerians have been getting poorer. That's a statistical and empirical fact. So we have to look at not just economic growth, but we have to look at economic or human development. What is the quality of life of the Nigerian right. people? Do they have portable drinking water, Professor. electricity, uh, good schools, good hospitals? These are the things that determine our everyday quality of life. And that is a very important component of, right. of the economy. And sincere thanks also to Professor Kingsley Mahalo, former uh, Deputy Governor of the CBN. That's how we leave it on the program tonight. Many thanks, everyone, for watching. I'm Sean Kimale. Bye-bye.